Hello, welcome to the Mark Janad Show, the cybersecurity show. So we have a breaking development. U.S. sanctions a Chinese cybersecurity firm for firewall hacks targeting critical United States infrastructure. In this video, I'm going to actually show examples of coding that the hackers could have used to exploit these Sophos firewalls to enter United States critical infrastructure infrastructure system so without further ado let's get right into it we are going dark so the steps are seven we have seven steps that i am going to discuss so these are the seven steps that the hackers could have potentially used Step one, uh, you know, for the for the CVE 2022 1040 Sophos firewall vulnerability was, you know, target the user portal and web admin interfaces of vulnerable Sophos firewall versions. That's the 18.5 MR3 and older. So to target the user portal and web admin interfaces of Sophos firewall, you'll need to access them through specific ports and URLs. So. Here is how to reach each interface, right? In regards to the user portal, the user portal can be accessed as follows. The URL format, the firewall's IP address or host name, and you know, the user portal port, the default port 4443, for example, HTTPS, right? 10.170.1.4443. Peter, you can put that on the screen as well. The web admin console, the web admin console can be accessed um, as follows. Basically, the URL format is right there. The firewall's IP address, Peter put that on the screen. And the admin console port, the default default port is 4444. And we can use this as an example, the security.sophos.com 44444. Now, the key points is both interfaces use HTTPS for secure access. The default ports can be changed by administrators for security reasons. It's recommended to access these interfaces only from trusted networks. The web admin console should not be enabled on eternal facing WAN interfaces to prevent potential attacks. Step two, exploit the authentication bypass vulnerability to log in unauthorized access. So we can do that. Uh, we can use the null as a truncation key to override values. You can utilize the coalesce or if null function in SQL, and here's how to do it. Using coalesce, uh, you know, Peter put that code on the screen, right? And using if null, that's the M, that's the MySQL specific, Peter, please put that code on the screen. So these functions will replace the existing value with null in the first argument, uh, you know, and that is null. The, so this effectively allows you to use null as a truncation key to override values in your database. So it's important to note that using null to override values doesn't actually truncate the data, but rather replaces it with a null value. If you need to truly truncate data, you should use the truncate statement, which removes all rows from a table. Step three, execute remote code on the compromised firewall. So remotely executing code on a, you know, a firewall is a sensitive operation that should only be performed by authorized personnel for legit legitimate purposes, right? So here are some methods to remotely execute on a firewall. Number one, use PS uh, exec. So PS exec is a utility that allows you to execute commands on remote computers, right? To use it, you're going to want to open an administrative command prompt, navigate to the PS exec directory, run the command PS exec computer name. And Peter, you could put that code on the screen for the viewers. Use the N E T S H firewall commands to manage the firewall. Use management instrumentation command line, which is, you know, the W M I C open an administrative command prompt. You can do that by running and W I, you know, W M I sorry, not W I W M I C. And Peter put that code on the screen since I messed up. Put all that, you know, so that they have clear, clear indication of what to do, right? You're going to want to replace the computer's name with the firewall's host name and your command with the desired command. Now, use SSH, right? If the firewall supports SSH, connect using SSH, user at firewall server. 
execute commands directly on the remote system. And then, you know, configure firewalls, Windows firewall, right? Configure Windows firewall for remote access. Open Windows firewall with advanced security. Create new inbound rules for required ports like the TCP 445 and UDP 137. Allow the remote debugger through the firewall. Now four, that was step three. Here's step four, which is drop a web shell backdoor to establish persistence. So to establish persistence using a web shell backdoor, create a malicious PHP, uh, you know, script containing a, you know, a backdoor payload, upload the PHP web shell to an accessible directory on the target web server. Ensure the web shell has appropriate permissions to execute on the server, access the web shell through a web browser to maintain unauthorized access, right? Use the web shell to execute commands, exfiltrate data, or deploy additional malware. Now, for increased persistence, implement backup mechanisms or automate re-upload of the web shell. Now, add the cron job to reinfect the environment with the web shell periodically. Exploit vulnerabilities to automatically reinstate the web shell if removed now. Remember that using web shells for unauthorized access is illegal and unethical. So this information is provided for edu educational purposes only, guys. Don't be out here walling. Step five, use the compromised firewall to launch man in the middle attacks, right? And here's how that typically works. Uh, use the NGFW, right? The, the MGFW, and as in Nancy, G, in GFW intercepts encrypted traffic between a user and a server. It decrypts the traffic using its own certificate, which is added to the user's device as a trusted root certificate. The firewall inspects the decrypted data for security threats or policy violations. The traffic is then re-encrypted and sent to its intended destination. This process allows organizations to monitor and control network traffic, but it's important to note that this is not considered a malicious attack when done by authorized network administrators for legitimate security purposes. However, the same technique could be exploited by hackers if they gain control of, you know, network infrastructure to implement this corporate environment, configure the NGFW to perform SSL, TLS uh, inspection, deploy the firewall's root certificate to all managed devices, set up policies for traffic inspection and logging. It's crucial, you know, for organizations to inform users about this practice and implement strong access control to prevent misuse. Now, step six is harvest information from MITM attacks to expand the attack surface. Now, uh, credential harvesting attack. Now, the example uh, we can use, you know, using Kali Linux, the prerequisites, you know, a system running Kali Linux, the social engineering toolkit installed, uh, open the terminal, right? Open the terminal, launch, you know, the terminal in your Kali Linux environment, start social engineering toolkit, type the following command and press enter. Peter, put that quote on the screen, select attack type, choose the first option for social engineering attacks, then select web uh, attack vectors, choose credential harvesting method, select the third option, credential harvester attack method, finally choose the site cloner, configure cloning, enter your local host IP address when prompted, input the URL on, you know, of the site you wish to clone, like, you know, Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Uh, deploy the clone after entering the target URL, your local host will create a cloned version of the specified website, share your local host IP address with potential victims disguised as the legitimate link. So harvest credentials, when victims attempt to log in via the clone site, their credentials will be captured and displayed in your terminal, right? So how this relates to expanding attack, uh, surfaces. Basically, as organizations adopt more cloud services, remote work, and IoT devices, their attack surface expands significantly. This increased exposure creates more opportunities for attackers to intercept communications through attacks like man in the middle. For instance, an attacker could exploit unsecured Wi-Fi networks or poorly configured devices to deploy such sniffers and capture sensitive data transmitted over the network.
Step seven is as goals, right? It compromise systems beyond the initial target, right? Which involves these steps, reconnaissance, which is the first stage involves identifying potential targets and gathering information about the network. Two is weaponization. Once sufficient information is gathered, hackers create weaponized payloads tailored to exploit identified vulnerabilities. Three is delivery, right? In this phase, the attackers deliver the malware or exploit the target. Exploitation upon a successful delivery, hackers exploit the vulnerabilities to gain unauthorized access to the, to the system. Installation after exploiting the system, attackers typically install backdoors or other persistent malware to ensure continued access. Step six, command and control. With a foothold established, hackers can now take control of the compromised systems. Seven, lateral movement. Hackers often move laterally across the network to compromise additional systems. Uh, step eight, exfiltration and impact, right? Finally, hackers may ex exfiltrate sensitive data and disrupt operations as part of their objectives. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. See you in the next video.